And if we experimentally know what the ionization energy is, we actually have a way to find out what the Z effective will be equal to. And we can use this equation here. This is just the equation for the ionization energy, which is the same thing as saying the negative of the binding energy. That's equal to Z effective squared RH over N squared. So what we can do instead of talking about the ionization energy, because that's one of our known quantities, is we can instead solve so that we can find Z effective. So if we just rearrange this equation, what we find is that Z effective is equal to N squared times the ionization energy all over the Rydberg constant and the square root of this. So the square root of N squared IE over RH. So what's our value for N here? One, yep, that's right. Um, and then what's our value for ionization energy? Mm -hmm. Yep, so it's just that ionization energy that we have experimentally measured. 3.94 times 10 to the negative 18 joules. We put all of this over the Rydberg constant, which is 2.18 times 10 to the negative 18 joules. And we want to raise this all to the 1 half. So what we end up seeing is that the Z effective is equal to positive 1.34. So this is what we find the actual Z effective is for an electron in the helium atom. Does this seem like a reasonable number? Yeah, who says yes? Raise your hand if this seems reasonable. Does anyone think this seems not reasonable? Okay, how can we check, for example, if it does or if it doesn't seem reasonable? Well, the reason, that the way that we can check it is just to see if it's in between our two extreme cases. We know that it has to be more than one because even if we had total shielding, we would at least feel as the effective of one. We know that it has to be equal to less than two because even if we had absolutely no shielding at all, the, the highest Z effective we could have is two, so it makes perfect sense that we have a Z effective that falls somewhere in the middle of those two. Uh, so let's look at another example of uh, thinking about whether we get an answer out that's reasonable. So we should be able to calculate a Z effective for any atom that we want to talk about as long as we know what that ionization energy is. Uh, and I'm not expecting you to do that calculation here because uh, it involves a calculator among maybe a piece of paper as well. But what you should be able to do is take a look at a list of answers for what we're saying Z effective might be and determining which ones are possible versus which ones are not possible. So why don't you take a look at this and tell me which are possible for a 2S electron in lithium, in a lithium atom where Z is going to be equal to 3. Let's do 10 more seconds on that. OK, great. So uh, the majority of you got it right. There's some people that are a little bit confused still on uh, where this makes sense. So let's just think about this a little bit more. So now we're saying that Z is equal to 3. So if, for example, we had total shielding by the other two electrons, if they totally canceled out one unit of positive charge each in the nucleus, what we would end up with is we started with three, and then we would subtract a charge of two. So we would end up with a plus one Z effective from the nucleus. Um, so our minimum that we're going to see is that the smallest we can have for a Z effective is going to be equal to 1. So any of the answers that said a Z effective of 0.39 or 0.87 are possible, they actually aren't possible because even if we saw total shielding, the minimum Z effective we would see is 1. And then I think it looks like most people understood that 4 was not a possibility. Of course, if we saw no shielding at all, what we would end up with is a Z effective of 3. So again, when we check these, what we want to see is that our Z effective falls in between the two extreme cases that we could envision for shielding. And again, just 
go back and look at this and think about this. This should make sense if you kind of look at those two extreme examples. So even if it doesn't make entire sense in the 10 seconds you have to answer a clicker question right now, make sure this weekend you can go over it and be able to predict if you saw a list of answers or if you calculate your own answer on the next PSET, whether or not it's right or it's wrong. You should be able to qualitatively confirm whether you have a reasonable or not reasonable answer after you do the calculation part.